What's cannabis? Is it good for your gums? What does it do to your teeth? Does it cause cancer? And many other different kinds of questions will be covered today. My name is Dr. Halim Spinati. I'm a dentist here in London, Ontario, and this is... Michelle Lin, I'm a registered dental hygienist. And today we're going to address all those questions, so let's get started. Yeah. So what is cannabis? Michelle? Oh, you're gonna ask me! <laughs> yes. I thought you were gonna answer this question. <laughs> okay, well, so oh, go ahead. oh, go ahead. No, no please. <laughs> go ahead. So I guess everyone has different words for it. What yes. it's called? Yes. Um, marijuana, uh -huh. weed, uh -huh. as the big popular. And I, I mean, there's always also with new discoveries of how to even use cannabis, <laughs> okay. right? Well, so what is it? Um. Oh, <laughs> you told me two fancy words that I was supposed to use. <laughs> it's a sedative. Right? Yes. It sedates you, calms you down. Yes. And it's a mood enhancer, makes you happy. Right. Right? And it's also an appetite stimulant. Yes, it yes. can be for makes sure. Makes you hungry. Yes. Okay? Um, it's used for medicinal purposes as well and recreational. Yes. Okay, so for people that, um, that are undergoing some kind of treatment, cancer treatment, uh, they use it to prevent them from vomiting or to increase their appetite so they can eat more. Yep. Um, and also it's used for as an analgesic, so people that are in pain. Yes. Okay? So that's what it is. Moving on. What does it do to your teeth? Since we're talking about oral health and oral health and cannabis use, what does cannabis or marijuana or whatever other kind of flavorful words you want to use for uh, marijuana, what does it do to your oral health? Because cannabis is relatively new, relatively new, and the research is relatively in, in its infantile stage, like it's very, very early on, mm -hmm. we don't have much in terms of evidence with regards to what it does with different forms of cannabis, but we do know that smoking has several effects on teeth, okay? So smoking itself causes uh, periodontal complications, okay? Mm -hmm. So you, um, you get a lot of... Um, gum stuff going gum, on. Gum, <laughs> yeah, gum stuff going on, which we'll address in a sec. Yeah. Um, you get dry mouth, which is called xerostomia. Which is teeth and gum issues too as well. That's right. Yeah. You get something called leukoplakia, okay, which is, you want to talk what leukoplakia is? I do. Okay. Um, so it's basically like an irritation or precancerous yes. condition that happens in the mouth. Yes. Um, it's usually can be found on the cheeks. It can be found under the tongue. Yes. It's a common area. Um, I've seen it on the insides of the, I guess, sorry, the cheeks and yep. the lips. And the floor of the mouth. And the floor of the mouth, yes. exactly. And it also increases your risk for mouth and neck cancers. So then, what about your gums? What does it do to your gums and your soft tissues inside your mouth? Michelle. Oh my goodness. So it can do a lot. Uh -huh. um, I usually talk about smoking and smoking marijuana because it's very similar side effects. Um, there has been studies, which is really cool, that even if you remove the um, use of smoking cigarettes, alcohol, social status, and oral health, there is a direct relationship between cannabis, cannabis use and periodontal disease. So, right? so, so hold on. So what you're telling me is, is that even if someone only smokes cannabis, there's still a likelihood that they're going to have periodontitis? Yes. Okay. So what's periodontitis? Well, it is the decrease of bone in your mouth. You can't, gingival inflammation, what happens when you smoke marijuana, it can be reversed. Yes. But once the bone is affected, yeah. then you can't grow bone back, right? So right. that's huge. So then you end up with what we call... Piano teeth. Piano teeth. Okay, <laughs> so uh, your teeth get really loose because you start losing a lot of the support, your gums and your bone. Right. Okay, and so then your teeth become loose. And that's periodontitis right. in short. Yes. Right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, what else? What else happens? Well, so I guess the first side effect you would sometimes notice a lot of people will get gingival enlargement okay. or inflammation. Okay. Um, so, so your gums become really like puffy. Exactly. Okay. That's the early stages of um, gum disease. Yeah. And then uh, ruthoplakia, which is just basically white and red spots along the gum line. Okay. Just like a pimpling or irritation, basically, yeah. if you want to look at that. So that will start. So that's another early sign that gum disease is starting to set in. Uh -huh. um, then we have, oral mucosa has hyper 
ketosis, uh -huh. which Ker is ba keratosis. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And so what <laughs> I would say in layman's turn is basically the top of the mouth is callusing yeah. because it's protecting itself from the heat or the nicotine is usually what I say from um, damaging the top of the mouth, right. right? Right. So, and a big thing for that is it's also happening, you're constricting blood flow and oxygen to the teeth and to the gums when you're um, smoking. Right. So then it, your mouth is starting to callus and right. protect, try to protect itself right. from that. And we also find a lot of those, and I'm sure you've seen them too, is that you find a lot of those white spots right behind the teeth all the way in the back for frequent smokers. Yes, yeah, long term. Of, yes, long term. And when it gets it starts getting really serious, then they start developing some white lines or some whiteness underneath the tongue or on the floor of the mouth. Right. Which it become, then becomes really serious because it becomes a sign of precancer. Right. Yeah. Does smoking marijuana cause more cavities? Michelle. Yes and no. Oh, yes and no. Okay. <laughs> we like these I, questions. I thought it was just a yes, but there's a no. All right, so tell me. Technically, it does, smoking marijuana does not cause cavities. Okay. But it causes a condition called xerostomia. Okay which is basically dryness in the mouth, Yes. which then more dryness causes more plaque or more debris to stick, which is going to cause more cavities and it can cause actually more gum disease too as well. Okay. So that's and, and, my no and, and yes. Okay. And what else does it cause besides your stomia? So what happens then is usually people, when they smoke marijuana, they would go for a high carb sugary treat. Right. And whether that comes in a liquid form or... A Some solid kind of form, right. and what's going to happen then is they're going to increase the frequency that they're getting their teeth and gums exposed to that, so they're causing more cavities or more gum issues. Right. Very, very good point. So, just to review, xerostomia, which is dry mouth, and also because it's an appetite, suppress, uh, appetite stimulant, not a suppressant, it's an appetite stimulant, you tend to reach for something that's going to satisfy your carb craving right away, which is anything simple. So like any sugar, like any chocolate or chips or anything like that, okay? Right. Because you want to satisfy that craving, okay? Maybe since it's an appetite stimulant, it's going to be very hard to actually satisfy that craving. So you tend to eat a lot. All right, what about an increased risk of cancer? Does smoking marijuana increase the likelihood of getting neck and oral cancer? It generally is when people are smoking cannabis, they're yeah. also smoking usually cigarettes. That's actually a very good point. So both of them together, yeah. you're going to have that like double whammy basically, right? Yeah, you're going right? to have an increased risk of oral and neck cancer. Does cannabis, does it help your immune system or does it suppress your immune system? Does it make your immune system weaker or does it make your immune system stronger? Weirdly enough, it actually makes your immune system weaker. Oh, okay. So what does that do then? If your immune system becomes weak, what happens? Well, you're not going to heal as well. Right. So you're more prone to disease or infection. That's right. Absolutely. So when it comes to cancer, does the risk increase with the use of cannabis use? And we just discovered and we talked about that, yes, it does. Yes. Okay. Because cannabis is an immunosuppressive. Okay, which means it makes your immune system weaker. And so then what it does is, is that it increases your risk of getting infections such as oral papilloma, papillomavirus infection, okay? Right. And other kinds of infections. But what is oral papillomavirus? Well, it's herpes um, related to oral sex. Okay, cool. So if you are smoking and you are um, sexually active, then you should... Even, it's even more prudent, it's even more important for you to actually go see the dentist to get them to check your mouth and the back of your throat uh, for any signs of any kind of precancerous lesions. It's really, really important. Should you smoke marijuana prior to seeing your dentist? Definitely no. It's a no, ladies and gentlemen. It's a no. But I think there's a lot of misconception that a lot of people that deal with smoking marijuana use it as... Um, they say it helps with anxiety. Okay. But it but actually. How come, yeah, but actually what? It actually doesn't, which Why? is crazy, right? Yeah. It actually increases your heart rate. Okay. So if you were to smoke marijuana before yeah. you go to the dental office, yeah. and I don't tell my dentist, and I happen to be getting a filling that day, and yes. they're using a freezing that has. Epinephrine. Right. Yes. Which is basically like adrenaline. Yes. So imagine you've had a couple cup of coffees. 
you're smoking weed and then you're going to the dentist to get a filling. It could, it could be life threatening. Definitely. Yeah. And then you're actually going to probably get more anxiety. Right. You're going to probably get some paranoia going on, right? Well, I mean, one of the symptoms of smoking or consuming cannabis is paranoia. Right. So, I mean, you're going into a space that is naturally anxiety provoking. So you're going to get even more anxious and yep. more paranoid, which makes for a very not fun dental visit. No. Right? Exactly. Okay. So that's why it's not a good idea to actually smoke marijuana prior to going to see no. the dentist. Okay? Definitely not. Excellent answer. Thank you so much for that. Unless you're bringing it for your dentist to eat or smoke. <laughs> I'm just joking. So what other problems could we have with someone smoking marijuana or being uh, under the influence of marijuana and being at the dentist, uh, dental office at the same time? What kind of problems can arise? Well, I think the biggest thing is it's going to affect their decision making. Right. So informed consent then That's is right. something that can be really challenging. What if something happens in the procedure that is not expected, which is common. That's right. And if you want to have a conversation with them, and they're not in the best state, then right. they can make a choice that's maybe not Not ideal. so good, right. And then there could be some legal, legal matters that, um, that can both implicate the dentist and the patient as well. Right. Okay, so very, very bad idea. If you are under the influence of marijuana, when you go see the dentist, make sure you tell your dentist, okay, because then they can manage the situation more appropriately. What is commonly found in people that normally use commonly use marijuana or cannabis, what do we usually find associated with their oral health? Some things. Yep, so um, number one usually is dry mouth. Yes, xerostomia. Yeah. Exactly, mm -hmm. and dry mouth leads to a bunch of different pro problems, right? Because okay. if you have dry mouth, generally you're gonna have um, debris stuck in the teeth and everything because you don't right. have your saliva naturally washing things away. That's right. And then that's going to actually create bad breath too yes. as well. So that's a huge thing in itself. Right. And? And then we have leukoplakia, which we talked about before. Yes. And it's just basically like um, irritation inside the mouth, which is precancerous. Right. White lining that you'll see um, generally under the tongue, um, on the floor of the mouth, kind of all over. But those are the main spots there. Doesn't seem like a very good idea to be a regular user of cannabis. I don't think so for your oral health. It's probably definitely not, not a, good a, idea. a good idea. Now, if you are a regular consumer of cannabis, but you still want to maintain a relatively good oral hygiene, okay? You want to maintain a good oral health. So, I mean, obviously, like, I'm going to be pro. Don't do it. <laughs> but if you are, we're going to give you um, things to be able to help. So, biggest thing I say is after you smoke it, Rinse it with water like crazy. I say the 30 second rule where you just put it in and for 30 seconds, just like a freak, swish it around, kind of making sure that, I always say, try to make your, sure that your lips and stuff around there are getting really rinsed out well because you don't want it to sit along the gum line as your cheeks kind of push it in because I see a lot of cavities happen that way. Um, so, so you're talking about moving the debris around, mm -hmm. right? Like, so, so you're eating something after you eat, make sure you have some water alongside so you can do what Michelle is advising, which is swish the water around to get all the debris out from exactly. the sides. Yes. Uh -huh. um, That's really good advice. And so having good oral hygiene is really important. So of course, I always say like flossing, brushing and water picking before bed because water pick actually helps with dry mouth. Yeah. And then it's going to dislodge anything that could have been stuck throughout the day because it's getting lodged in there. Yeah. That's actually really good advice because people that are intoxicated, they usually they're not the, the least thing they're probably going to do is what they want to floss or brush their teeth. Yeah. Right. Which is like the number one thing you want to do if you're trying to prevent decay or any kind of problems in yeah. your mouth. Right. So be very, very mindful about brushing your teeth, flossing, and using water pick, as Michelle just advised. What else? Maintaining a balanced diet is going to be really important because mm -hmm. as we know, it it suppresses the immune system. Mm -hmm. So you're going to want to make sure that you're eating your fruits and vegetables and being mindful that you're not maybe um, already going to the high Such carbs good when advice. You're not intoxicated. Such good advice. Um, Such good advice. So, and if you do drink, like obviously you should avoid drinking like pop. But if you are going to drink pop or energy drinks or things, drink it through a straw so it goes past your teeth and down your throat. I like that advice. Um, so then it's not just sitting all along the teeth. And of course, drink water after. Mm -hmm. um, you can definitely 
If you are experiencing dry mouth, you will want to use a fluoride uh, rinse mouthwash yep. or a toothpaste that has fluoride in it yep. that's going to help with that. Is there something else that I can do to decrease my, the likelihood of these negative effects of my oral health? Well, I would say honestly, in my world, you're supposed to floss once a day before bed. I always say you should be flossing twice a day to... So, so increase, increase your oral hygiene. Yeah. But I'm saying like instead of smoking, maybe we consider something that's not smoking. Like yes, so there are forms of marijuana that they now have out that you could eat. Yes, right? so, and so, and so they call them edibles. Edibles, right. Okay, so edibles, and those are less risky to your oral health in terms of causing cancer. That's what we know so far. Yes. Than smoking. Yes. Okay, because the carcinogens found in smoke are the ones that actually irritate the lining of the mucosa right. and they lead to So cancers. you're higher risk for yes. cancer if you're smoking it. If you're smoking tobacco or smoking right. marijuana because of those yep. carcinogens. So then instead of smoking it, maybe it's a better idea to do edibles. That's if you cannot remove yourself from consuming marijuana. Yes, because I mean edibles come in like sugary treats. Right. So it's kind of... Yeah. Right? But like, I can appreciate the fact that there's not the um, carcinogens in it. And then also your mouth, when you're smoking it, it's um, the heat is hitting the top of the mouth. So your mouth actually calluses and starts to protect itself. So you're not getting that side effect and, too and as well, also, right? And it's also not as harmful to your lungs. Exactly. As well, right? Because you're not smoking that, all that, uh, that bad smoke. Right. All right. And then what's the, the really important part that you should do if you're a regular consumer of cannabis and you want to maintain your teeth and gums to their optimal health, what should you do on a regular basis? Michelle. Every six months, yes. you should go and see the dentist yes. and get an oral health um, checkup yes. so they can do your oral, oral cancer, cancer screening. Yep. Um, and I think the number one thing is just be honest with us professionals, right? That's we right. can help you more if we know how often you're doing it, how That's you're right. doing it, That's right. how we can try to bring your oral health to a priority if you're not going to stop and what we can kind of do to try to prevent gum disease and cavities from happening in the mouth. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Michelle. Yes. Thank you guys for tuning in. Please make sure you hit the like and subscribe and you comment. We will be sharing a lot more information, a lot more knowledge every single week. So be up to date with that knowledge and we'll see you soon.